Excuse me, ma'am, do you know where the campsite is? In this video, camper van heaven. So what we have here is a 1990 Ford Econoline 250. I'm not sure what the 250 refers to, maybe it's brake horsepower from its enormous 5.8 litre V8 engine. Uh, the, this generation is the third generation of Econo line. It was introduced in 1975, as you can probably guess by the looks, and carried on in production right through until the mid-90s, I think it was, um, at which point they uh, evolved the body, but not the underpinnings. Uh, it's a separate chassis uh, on these third generation trucks. Um, engine at the front, as you'd probably expect, and Ford's traditional I-beam front suspension basically a beam axle uh, which uh, was used for many many years on the um, f-series pickups as well as these these became known as the e-series vans uh, they're still produced today in fourth generation form but only as a chassis cab um, or a complete bare chassis that you put your own bodywork on uh, they don't do the panel vans any longer they've replaced it with the ford transit rather bizarrely seems a bit strange to our european tastes because this is enormous and transit's are just not cut of the same cloth. Uh, the Ford Econo line uh, story begins in 1960 for the 1961 model year. Back then it was a forward control, so no bonnet at the front. Um, a monocoque construction available as a van or a pickup. Uh, Musty One is, at various stages has been restoring one of those pickups. Quite interesting, they didn't have room for a V8, only a straight six engine. Uh, but after a couple of generations of those, the second generation one had a bit of a bonnet, but was still very much forward control. Uh, they completely redeveloped it um, on a separate chassis so they could use more F-series truck um, components. And of course, it gives people much more flexibility. If you're going to build an ambulance, say, or a parcel van, the fact it's a separate chassis makes your life an awful lot easier. This one was bought by my friends, Fergus and Andrea. They went to America. Uh, it's actually the second one they bought in America. The first one they ended up cancelling on because it was so bad. So they bought this, they road tripped it around America, and then they shipped it home. They drove it to a port on the east side of America to make it easier to ship home. So they did a couple of thousand miles over there, and then they bought it over here, and they still use it. It was at the Retro Rides Weekender, this very weekend just gone. And uh, I can see why, it's a very appealing package. Um, so normally we'd start by having a look around the outside, so I think we'll do a bit of that and try and work out what things are. There's a little hatch here. I don't know what this is for. Uh, oh, it's, uh, he's got his mallet and uh, uh, something else in there that looks like it contains a lot of straps. Maybe that's where you keep your awning. Um, it did have air conditioning all built into it, but he's actually removed that now. Uh, we've got water connection. If you connect your water up, you can connect your electric up. Um, it has a full um, waste sewage system on it. So it, it, there's your sewer outlet connection. Um, so it's, it's not like the, the systems we have in Europe. Uh, we've got a ladder, so you can climb up on the roof of it. I haven't noticed that. So you can climb up on the roof of the van and it turns out he's actually fitted a solar panel up here to try and charge the, the leisure batteries. There are two of them. Uh, so it's not often I get to drive a vehicle that's actually got a ladder on it. Uh, if we open up the back doors, we can see uh, it's, it's currently set in meal mode. So obviously you could sleep a couple of people here. It's not the longest bed, it has to be said. So I think we'll head inside for a, a better look. So open the door. We've actually got twin doors here, so we can just move that one as well. But that's really only for ventilation because this um, sink unit is in the way. Uh, it's quite a high step up, so that's not ideal for um, tiny camera ladies. But can you make it? Yeah. Yes. So we've already seen the bed above the cab. Uh, this one can also be turned into a bed. Uh, so it is actually a six berth camper, but you'd better be very good friends, is all I'm going to say, because it is rather cozy. Uh, we've got little lights here, which are the flimsiest things I've ever seen. It can be set in a number of positions from which they will never stay. Uh, that's quite interesting. Uh, lots of windows. We've got a fridge here that apparently includes um, an ice maker. Because, uh, you know, Americans, you, you want to do cold beer properly. 
So that's uh, quite functional. We've got a gas hob, we've got the sink with electric water, and uh, we've got this device to tell you, um, there we go, that tells you what your water levels are. So we're getting a bit low on the old fresh water, but we've got plenty of um, liquid petroleum gas. Uh, drawers are various things. Uh, like how the drawer has a cutout in it. It's obviously clearing something in there, so it's a very little uh, drawer. It looks like we've got an extractor fan. Yes, listen to that baby purr. And more storage. Uh, there would have been a bathroom, full bathroom. Um, you'll note, uh, but you've got the toilet in there, but you can toilet and shower at the same time, should you feel the need. I'm not sure I ever would, that horrifies me. And then this rather cozy little eating area at the back with a, a telly that Fergus has fitted uh, that essential mod con of the camping world. A uh, nice little light here. Um, so yeah, it, it's a very compact little camper, but then it's designed for six people. Uh, I think um, if you were to start from a fresh van, you'd probably um, change it a bit so you got a bit more space. So it's cozy. Which is surprising for such a big American vehicle, but there we are. Um, I think we should probably, uh, well, I say we'll have a look under the bonnet. You can't actually see under, anything under the bonnet. So let's go and look at nothing under the bonnet. Before we lift the bonnet, this is the van's name, LA Bob. Uh, I'm assuming they bought it in LA. Oh, it's hot under here. Crikey. Ugh. Here is not very much engine. Um, an awful lot of heat. Uh, I forget which family of engines this is. Is it the Windsors? I'm not sure. But yeah, 5.8 litres and amount of power but it's mostly about the torque um, and heat generation. So there's not an awful lot to see under there. So perhaps we better get moving. Let's just take in the full splendor of not only Miss Hubnut's trousers, but uh, the wood dashboard, which is very, very 1970s. It's very, very fake wood as well. Uh, so column mounted gear selector for the free speed transmission. The speedometer is due to federal requirements at the time, only goes up to 85 miles an hour and uh, various controls. We've got a tiny little indicator stalk and the most wonderful piece of bodgery I've ever seen, fitted by my friend Fergus, so the indicator doesn't keep turning itself off. That's delightful. Uh, wiper and washer controls are over here. Lights down here. Is that a pull? Oh, it is a pull. There we go, to get the lights on. And the uh, handbrake release down here, along with a hood release. But you know, mod cons. We've got central locking and uh, electric windows as well um, and these hideous um, door release catches they're awful i think mean, you meant to go like that i don't know i don't like it and uh yeah very clangy van like build quality but i think it's probably time to get moving right then startup process um, you turn the ignition on uh, you hope it'll start because the inhibitor switch is a bit iffy so sometimes you have to give that a bit of a shove but uh, yeah, that mighty V8 engine. It, um, it's not about the burble in this case, it's more about um, refinement, which is kind of what you want in a camper van. You're gonna be spending hours behind the wheel. You don't want too much blah, 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 and big exhaust perhaps. No, I do, as a matter of fact, but still we are where we are. Uh, so we drop it into drive, foot on the brake. We pull the brake release, bang, and uh, off we go. It must be said that brake release um, needs needs a good shove, but I imagine the rear brakes are quite enormous. A very light power steering, no sensation of what's going on at all. And then you're just ambling away. It feels, um, the handling is terrible. Uh, the power is almost non-existent. The ride, yeah, it's um, wobbly. Um, it's not really a vehicle you drive for the pleasure of driving. I think that's fair to say. Uh, but a camper van, you just want it to cover miles effortlessly. And that enormous V8 engine and automatic transmission, I've no idea what gear it's in. I don't really care. It's just nice and easy. In stark, stark contrast to the Citroen H van I drove fairly recently, uh, which um, did have very fine handling, but was such hard work to drive. Uh, I should have driven one of these to Sweden instead. It um, would have drunk even more fuel. Uh, Fergus reckons he gets 12.5 mpg. 
there are two fuel tanks well, one is 82 liters i think and the other is 68 uh, that's uh, a lot of fuel uh, it's going to be very expensive to fill up at uk prices but yeah it just ambles along quite merrily we're going to take it down to a dual carriageway where we can unleash its full potential but uh yeah for wafting along it is uh superb yeah the steering is just marvelously awful uh it sometimes feels quite direct and makes you start wobbling all over the place and other times doesn't seem to do anything much at all we haven't done windscreen wipers yet uh how do you wash is it a push oh yeah there we go oh on blade that's fancy uh the merest hint of triangle of doom and uh quite a corner of disappointment there but uh, nonetheless not bad and here we go out onto the um freeway as they would say in america use the excellent mirrors to see if anyone's coming they are and they're not letting me pull over come on mate thank you So we're MR2 Mark 1 down there, but here we go. Oh, listen to that. That's an indicated 65 miles an hour. And probably about 6 miles to the gallon as well. So, uh, we, you know, we've got the windows open. Uh, it feels really quite good, I think quite composed and that's what it's built for it's built for wafting along straight roads it's not built for handling that was never ever a consideration I think the extra high up weight just makes things even more ungainly but uh, it's all about the comfort and uh, the relaxation it has cruise control but apparently the brake switch isn't working very well so the cruise control tries to keep you going even when you want to stop so we're not going to play with it but it is there Kick down. Oh. That's actually a decent amount of go, I would say. This is a true test of van power. You can overtake a Merc Sprinter. Yeah, not a problem. So the braking is um, pretty decent for such a big vehicle, I would say visibility is really good the mirrors are really good so uh, it's no great hardship to drive this king of the american road here in the uk we are currently in surrey in the south of england so this must be quite the experience for la bob uh, i'm not sure how many miles this vehicle has done uh, it only has a five digit odometer which i find remarkable so it's got 24,000 on it but how many times has that gone around we'll never know but uh, yeah, a very different world for LA Bob. Los Angeles Horsham is very much not. So there we go, that is LA Bob, the Ford Econo line. has made it all the way from America to the south of England, where um, it's great sizes. Not ideal, but it could be worse if it was a full-on camper body. It is a bit cramped in the back. Um, it, it does handle pretty much like a hippo in a wheelbarrow, but uh, it's very charming to drive it's effortless to drive I, I could seriously see me one day driving such a vehicle across america myself i think it would be wonderful uh, because our vans over here just don't have enough torque uh, or v8s so there you go i hope you've enjoyed that and um, don't forget you can head to the hub nuts store if you would like to buy some lovely merchandise to support what we do uh, i've got a huge list of vehicles to get through already um, in fact there's some vehicles I've driven this week I've been waiting two years to drive it's sort of taking that long to get done but yeah thank you for everyone who's emailed offers of cars and uh, we shall see you in a future video farewell LA bar wow I've just discovered Bob still has a dip switch on the floor to operate in the main beam. That's quite funky. Rear lights.
watch out BMW, I'm very big and solid. I will mash you into pieces.